Hi everyone, we're back with Dwayne Thompson. We're getting down to the real deal about Dwayne. So, Dwayne, 23 years? 23 years. 23 years as a Marine. How did that change you? Who was that person that went into the Marine Corps and who came out? The man that went into the Marine Corps was a scared, well-intended young man who found out that he was about to be a father oh. straight out of high school. Wow. Um, let's just let's just say I wasn't necessarily doing the right things in life. Or maybe not <laughs> prepared for that. And yes, and that was all on me. That yeah. was completely on me. But the thing that I did not want to be to look back in life is to not be there for my daughter. Mm -hmm. So whatever it took for me to be there for my daughter, I wanted to do it. Wow. The Marine Corps came along. Um, they threw down a challenge and says, any one of you who thinks you can be a Marine, then step up to the plate. Now, knowing me as a kid, hey, I'm up for the challenge. Challenge <laughs> out challenge. there. You're going to take that with all you, with all the gusto you can. Yeah, plus the uniforms. The uniforms. You and, can't beat the uniforms. Oh, oh, seriously. Seriously. <laughs> so, 23 years later? 23 years later, I've been to war. I've served on humanitarian missions around the world. I've had the opportunity to work with other service members from different branches, even the civilian sector. I've seen half the world. My daughters have seen half the world with me. And along the way, there were challenges, just like with everything else in life. But I would not change anything. I am so grateful for my time in the service. So who is Dwayne Thompson today? Dwayne Thompson today is a man who wants to continue to help people. I'm not rich by any stretch of the imagination, but when I look at my fellow vets who are struggling, who have mental health challenges, who are homeless, who are transitioning from the service and don't have a job, and I think about that person, me, when I was transitioning, I was faced with all of that. And I needed some help in order to steer me in the right direction. Yeah. I wanna do that for veterans as well and their families. And so here you are, <clears throat> you found our Working Wardrobes organization and the VetNet program and you are clearly leading this team of behavioral health and veterans who are offering these support services. How does that feel for you today? Are, are you, is this the dream? If I were to picture myself at the age of 41, retiring and saying, okay, what's next? Mm -hmm. This would be what's next. I did retire at 41. I relocated to Florida, bought the house, lived the dream, if you will. But after about a year, I realized there was something missing. There was something missing. I hired some veterans to help me out with some home projects. And over time, I got to know them. And half of them were homeless. Half of them were suffering from mental disorders. And when I offered, to even drive them to the clinic, they would turn me down and I couldn't understand why. And so that kind of grew on me as time passed, the months passed. And so I had a conversation with my daughter who was attending USC for her master's degree in social work. And it just kind of dawned on me and said, hey, listen, I can either sit back and not do anything for the rest of my life or I can rejoin the world and actually just contribute, just help, because it's in me. It was in me for 23 years, it's what we did. Granted, we had a weapon, but now we I can continue doing the same thing without a weapon, and why not? Exactly, and you know, I think what's so important about what you're saying, Dwayne, is 
when those of us who are patriots and not veterans really take a look at what maybe goes into military service, we're not as aware of the humanitarian mm. part of the work that you do. So you came out of 23 years with a level of compassion that is extraordinary. And you have a daughter who's getting a master's in social, it's like your whole family is has has really been in this in this place. Oh, absolutely. How does that make you feel that you've got proud? A, oh, Extremely I guess. Extremely proud. Um, yeah. So when I went back to USC and got my master's, so yay, both of us are now <laughs> carrying right. USC masters, we're social workers. Um, and last year, uh, when COVID hit, um, I got laid off. And so I found myself once again thinking, okay, I work for a nonprofit upon graduating from USC. So I needed, I, again, that, that void opened up and I needed to do something. Mm -hmm. And I spoke with the girls, I call them the girls. Yes. And they said, why don't you just open up a nonprofit? You've always talked about opening your own nonprofit to help military families. I said, you know what? why not? So I did. Got a couple of board members, um, spoke to some military friends, and they gave me their support. And now we have <clears throat> a military nonprofit that raises funds to support active duty service members. So we started that last year. Uh, we raised a couple of dollars, modest amounts, right. but again, it helped fill that void. Mm -hmm. And then a year later, here comes working wardrobes, this wonderful opportunity. <laughs> well, that smile on your face says everything. So I, what I love most of what I've heard, and I, I, I'm so connected to your heart, honestly, your pride and the honor that you bring to this work is so palpable. It's like what you have done with your daughters, which is so admirable. So if you had a chance to talk to the audience listening today, Dwayne, what would you say to them about why it's so important to financially support working wardrobes in our VetNet program? What's, what is life-changing about what you do? Perhaps one of the most important aspects of what we do here is we provide financial assistance. Um, beyond the mental health counseling, and beyond connecting them to other resources within the community, we provide financial resources to help them overcome barriers. Barriers that keeps them off the streets. Barriers that empower them with the power of a paycheck. I know you know what I'm talking yes, about. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Uh, barriers that can help them regain a sense of trust within or population within the civilian population because a lot of that trust gets lost when a lot of veterans transition from the military if they don't have a good transition plan mm -hmm. like it or not they find themselves on the streets it ha happens so quickly doesn't and it if time passes the more time passes the deeper that mistrust gets and so those financial resources allow us to reconnect with the veterans, again, offering them hotel stays to get them off the streets so that we can pursue long-term housing solutions. Offering them a meal, a subway card, so that they don't have to go hungry that night. Offering them target cards so that they can have proper hygiene. It goes a long, long And way. these are basics. These are basics. Basic this needs. is about the basic dignity of, our, of the clients that you're serving. So we're going to ask anyone who is listening in, find a way to support our program, our VetNet program and our behavioral health program. Dwayne, I want to thank you for what you do every single day. I want to thank you for the 23 years that you very honorably served our country. And I want to thank you for being an extraordinary father. Thank you, Jerry. It's, I appreciate that. It is such a pleasure to have you part of our team. And everyone, this is what goes on inside Working Wardrobes. These amazing, amazing staff people that just knock it out of the park every day. Please come back and tune in. We've got many more stories with many more of our roving reporters, just like Dwayne Thompson. We'll see you again real soon. Thanks, everyone.